Hi, New Point family. We're so glad you're here today. I am not Pastor Kyle. My name is Becca Hodson. I am the kids pastor. I do youth ministry and secretary, lead teams, whatever needs done. I usually am and volunteering to do that. But I'm so glad that you have joined us for Facebook Live today. And it's going to be an awesome day. I know it's been a really strange summer. And we're going to make the best of the situation. Everybody's on vacation, quarantined, and all kinds of things. But we're here to hear from the Lord today. Um, next week, our plan is to meet in person, in service. But as you know, things can change quickly. They can, um, it's a fluid situation. I know everybody uses that term, but it's a fluid situation. So I want you to check your emails, check your texts. Um, Facebook, whatever it is, make sure you're checking that for updates just in case something changes. But as of now, we are planning to meet next week in person at church. So I hope you will join us. Continue to pray for those that are fighting sickness and trying to get better. And pray for protection over those that are, um, haven't gotten sick. But we just ask that you pray for our church and the people that are affected by this virus and our state. Because the... The uptick in cases has happened, and we're just, you know, it doesn't know, we don't know what's going to happen. So, anyway, I want to ask a question. How are you feeling today? Anybody? How you, how you doing? Well, we're going to check. I want you to check, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to take your left hand, you're going to put it right under your neck, you're going to, right under your jaw, you're going to feel for your pulse. I want you to feel it. Now, can you feel your pulse? If you can't feel your pulse... You need to go to the doctor, okay? We, we, you need to go see someone, an expert, but you should be able to feel your pulse. Well, I segue that into, I used to teach PE, um, taught elementary school PE, and throughout the year we would study systems of the body. We would study all the five systems of the body, and come February we would always do the circulatory system. And as you know, the circulatory system has to deal with blood, it has to deal with veins, and especially the heart. We, we talk about the heart. And some fun facts about the heart. I know Kyle did a kind of a rabbit hole of some different things, spinning and water bottles and stuff like that. But the rabbit hole of heart, I did some fun facts about the heart. Your heart beats 115,000 times a day. It's crazy. And it pumps 200, or not 200, 2,000 gallons of blood a day. It's the size of your fist in your chest. And guess what? Sneezing does not stop your heart. It doesn't stop your heart, unlike some people think. Laughing says is good for the heart. And you can also die of a broken heart. There's called a broken heart syndrome. I just saw this on my Facebook feed this week from a news organization, how, you, how there's an uptick in dying from a broken heart. And um, well, we would try to find, have our students find their heartbeat just like you did a little while ago. And um, they would be so excited. We would run, get our heartbeat up, and then we'd walk and bring it down. And they were so excited to find their heart. And we would talk about the physical parts of the heart, how we need to eat right, exercise, and reduce the stress in our, um, in our lives. The same is true when it comes to our spiritual life and aspects of our heart. We need to take care of it. And Solomon had some wonderful wisdom when it comes to things of the heart. Now, all month of July, or yes, all month of July, we've been diving into Proverbs. And the first thing we've been doing is reading a proverb a day. And we are on chapter 19 today. And I hope you've been able to join us. It's been so neat to see everyone share about how that chapter, that specific chapter, has impacted them. And I hope you've enjoyed it just like I have. Um, we also started this series called Don't Wreck Your Life. And Kyle last week talked about how we don't need to lose our focus and how um, life kind of just keeps spinning and we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and keep that focus. But week three today, we're going to study about how our heart gives us passion and purpose. And a common theme in Proverbs, as you know, is wisdom. But today I want to concentrate on Proverbs 4.23. And I'm going to read that for you. 
Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Um, that's it. So, <laughs> so, um, so it's the wellspring of life. And um, that's my jumping off point for today is that verse. And I found a, f- a few interesting things as I was studying how the ancient Israelites in biblical times, they knew the heart was the center of all human existence. And they also believed that the heart was where thoughts and emotions and wisdom and your physical life came from. That through your heart, you could feel fear, distress, depression. But on the flip side, you could also feel joy and make motive and choices made that motivate your desires. Our heart gives us passion and purpose, but what is our passion and purpose are our hearts really revealing? And that's what I'm going to kind of dive in today. Our hearts are capable of great love and great sorrow. The situation with this virus and quarantine has seemed to make the outflow of our hearts more evident. It's right there where everybody can see it. What we've been putting into our heart is what is coming out. And that is kind of, I have a demonstration. If you know me, I'm kind of, um, kind of push the envelope a little bit. Um, I have a object lesson for us to do today, and um, it is going to demonstrate the outflow of our heart. So we're going to have this demonstration. If you've seen this on any kind of video, it's been where you get diet soda and you put a Mentos inside and you're getting ready to see what happens. But today I've labeled the soda can, the soda bottle, your heart. And inside of your heart is this, is the main portion of the, the um, bottle. So at the top, this funny looking thing is going to help with the demonstration. So I have this little Mentos, and this can be representative of what you're putting into your heart, what you're seeing, and what's happening to you. And um, I'm going to put this in. It has a little pin, so it's not going to go right off the bat. It's going to go when I want it to, so that's good. But are you ready? So I'm going to put this in, and it's going to represent what we're putting into our lives. Okay? We are putting things in, and the only thing that's going to happen, the only thing that can happen is it's things are going to come out. And so we're going to represent that today. All right. So you ready? So don't tell Kyle I did this on the stage or Dean, okay? But um, as you can see, when we put things in, the, the effect is for it to come out. And we need to be on guard for what we put in our hearts. And so we're going to continue on. And we need to be careful what we allow in our hearts. And what, because it's the outflow of our life. Um, there's some certain hid, hidden dangers that we can have with our heart. There's a couple of them. And if you know about heart disease, heart disease can creep up on you. And there's certain safeguards that you can take for. Um, to guard your heart. Now, I have this story. I have a friend that has a pacemaker and a defibrillator. And as you know, those guard your heart from your heart getting out of rhythm or it has a bad rhythm. And you know, it shocks the defibrillator. It will shock your heart back into rhythm. Well, we were playing volleyball at Unity Gym here in Ponca City. And we were um, playing a co-ed church league ball and volleyball, and we were, you know, in the midst of a game, we were all playing, it was fun, and all of a sudden, I hear my friend, he grabs his chest, and he's just like, ah, screaming, and we're all turning around going, what's happening? Uh, Are you okay? And, And pretty soon, like three seconds later, he's like, ah, and it was just, it was scary. It was beyond scary to see him. And he took off and he walked around and he finally laid down. Well, what we came to realize and what he told us is his defibrillator was shocking. Now, normally it was shocking him, but normally that doesn't happen when they're awake. I mean, they usually pass out from something like that, but he didn't. And it was the scariest, one of the scariest moments of my life to see him being shocked 
several times and trying for that defibrillator, trying to get his heart back into rhythm. Now, God can do that with our lives, my life. God can put something there that can shock us, that can shock us. And the purpose is to get you back into rhythm with him. I don't know about you, but I don't like it whenever I'm shocked and I have to get back in rhythm with him. But that's the purpose of guarding your heart and why we need to do this. Why in Proverbs 4.23 it says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Now, in biblical times, guarding your heart, you'd see this... um, chariot soldier guy, and he would be in front of the chariots, okay? He would be running, guarding the procession and guarding a chariot. That was their kind of word picture for guarding. And so I can just see this soldier running, ready, having his shield, having his sword, running in front of the chariot, ready for any kind of attack. And that's what we need to be on guard with because you know so many things can make us further, take us further and further away from God. Maybe it's a relationship that's hurt you or caused you to have bitterness. Maybe it's social media or entertainment. What you're putting in your, your heart is causing you to let your guard down and not be in step with the Lord. Um, but who is guarding your heart? We can try to guard our heart, through all these things, you know, watch the right thing, uh, right things that are good, read the Bible. Um, we can do things that guard our hearts, but we cannot do it on our own. And in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says the heart is deceitful above all things beyond cure. Who can understand it? If we desire our lives and hearts to change, God must do the changing. We can try to do all the good things, do all the right, check all the boxes. But unless God is in it, unless we allow God to change us, all of that is for nothing. And so um, in Deuteronomy 36, it says the only true redemption for humanity is the total renewal of the human heart. That is the only way. You have to get everything out and change it. So what is your heart beating for today? What are you living for? Is it beating for the things that Christ desires? Or is it and and for the others to know Christ and for you to serve him through showing everyone love as much as you can? Or is it beating for things of the world? Desire to get things, status, to be entertained or just plain not be nice? How, do, how can we get our hearts beating again with excitement? Like those students I was talking to you about at the beginning when I was teaching them where their heartbeat was and how they can find it. Some of them were so excited. They were saying, Miss Hodson, Miss Hodson, my heart's beeping. You, you, I, I feel my heart beeping. They were so excited. What gets you excited about serving the Lord? What can get you that Um, that excitement back? How does the outflow of your life bring life-giving love of Jesus? And how can it guard our hearts from spewing things of this world like I showed you with the Coke and uh, the Mentos? We don't want to be spewing those things. We want to be spewing things. uh, That's a weird word, but um, we want to be the outflow of us to be the things of life, not things of death, not things of this world, but things of God. And I have three things that can help us do that. Um, Things that can transform your heart. If you're ready to do that, one, the first one is be open. Be open for God to show you where you need to change. Now, this is hard. This is so hard because we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to open up to those places that make us feel uncomfortable But God needs you to be open. He needs you to start molding your heart, making it more pliable for things of him. And it says in Psalms 139, 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Trust me, know my anxious thoughts. 
See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. We need to be open to God showing us those things we need to change in order for us to be able to live the life God wants us to live. The second thing is to invite the Holy Spirit to change you. You got to be open first, then you got to invite the Holy Spirit to change those things in you because we cannot do it ourselves. We cannot do enough good things. We can't earn it. It's not something to be earned. It's some, it's a gift that's free. We earn without merit. We earn without doing things, good things. God just loves us and gives it to us freely. So we need to be open to the Holy Spirit to change us. In Psalms 51, 10 through 11, it says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew my steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. We need to be asking for that Holy Spirit, inviting the Holy Spirit to come and change those places, fill those places that we need to change and do the flip-flop of just changing our way of thinking, changing our heart to think on things of God. The third thing and last thing of ways to transform your heart would be to surrender. Surrender and be filled so we can fulfill the greatest commandment. And that commandment is in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37. And it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Totally surrendering everything, not just the parts we want to give, not just the parts we want to give. We need to surrender totally. When we do that, we lean on Proverbs 3, 5 that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We don't have to have all the answers. God has all the answers. If we're open to Him changing our hearts, we invite the Holy Spirit to come inside of us, change those things, and surrender all those places that we've been carrying, that we've been trying to change. God will do that. We just need to ask. Remember, our hearts give us passion and purpose. I've gone through times when my heart and soul were not totally focused on God. I didn't guard my heart from things of the world, and I let others influence the way I influenced my walk with God, and the things that I watched and read didn't help. We can be passionate about sports and hobbies and relationships and work. We might think those things are good. And we fill our hearts with only those things, but we're not truly filled. We just continue to fill that void with things not from God. God wants a relationship to you, with you. Um, we find ourselves trying to satisfy the only thing that God will satisfy And in that relationship, he should be the outflow of your heart. The heartbeat of your life affects everything else. What is your heart beating for? Don't ignore it. Don't ignore your heart like it's something. I know your heart's important physically, but your heart is more important spiritually. Just like your heart needs to be the center of your life in the center of what you're focused on and how important is it physically, it's also this, God needs to be that center. God needs to be in the center of your life throughout which everything radiates through the filter of God, not through the filter of you. Now, you may think that you're too far gone. Your heart can't be repaired or restored. You're like that heart in Ezekiel where your heart is stone. And it can't be broken. It's calloused. Have you ever had a callous? I've had a callous. And those calluses, you feel, but you really don't feel. It's dead. It's dead skin. 
Do you feel that dead skin? Do you feel dead? Do you feel where you're not really feeling the world around you and you're just kind of going with the motions? God doesn't want you to do that. God is here to make your heart of stone a heart of flesh and to restore what you thought you could change. We can talk to him, and it's not too late. Tell him that you need him. Take all those bad things that you've done, you're holding on, you're holding on to, you can't make better in your own power. And it's as simple as three things. Now, I teach kids ministry, and we talk about the ABCs. And I can show you, I know you know your ABC, A, B, C, D, F, G, whatever. It's not that, okay? It's the ABCs of salvation, okay? And the first one is A, you have to admit. Just like we, I said with, the, with the transforming your heart, it's being open. You have to admit that you're a sinner. You do things that aren't right. You do things that are wrong. You have to admit that. You can't change it in your own power. You can't take the, you don't want to take the punishment, but you need to know that you cannot rescue yourself from what, from what, from the sins that you've committed. Uh, the second one is B. Believe. Believe Jesus died. He was innocent, and he died a death on the cross for you and for me, for our sins. And um, I was sharing this story of what sinning is, and sinning's mis. Sin is missing the mark. We can never hit the bullseye. And the only way we can hit that bullseye is with Jesus and believing what he did for us. Believing he died on the cross for our sins and rose again on the third day and is seated in heaven with his father with the Father. C. C is commit. I heard this commit your life to Christ. Also, it's confess. All right, so you commit your life, solely surrendering your life to Him, to give Him those things that you've been holding on to, that you've been carrying around the burdens that you've been carrying. Give them to God. Fully commit your life, not just parts, not just what you want. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. And with all your mind. That's everything. And then confess that he is Jesus and he is Lord of your life. Those three things. Admit, believe, confess. All you have to do is pray those things. Ask for Jesus to take away your sins. To come into your life. Change you. And then give yourself and confess that he is Lord of your life. Those three simple things. I'm not saying your heart will be transformed. Some of them are. I've seen people that are transformed immediately. But it is a process. We like to say in the church office, especially through all this stuff, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But you got to take the first step first. You got to take any kind of race. You have to you have to get to the to the starting line. And you have to take that step. I'm asking you to take that step today. Don't wait. Don't wait for some better time. If you see the world around us, it is a mess. The only constant, the only thing that never changes is God. He will be with you through COVID. He will be with you through financial distress. He'll be with you through health crisis. He will be there for you. You just have to simply ask. I, if you have done that or, or if you've been, been a Christian your whole life and maybe you're kind of, your heart beats kind of wane for things of the Lord, you're tired. And I understand that. I've gotten tired of following, following the ways of God. It's been hard. I've gone through depression and frustration through this COVID thing. I don't know if anybody else has done that, but it's been tough. But if I focus, just like Kyle said last week, focus on things of God. Guard my heart from all those things that are trying to bombard me and trying to make me bitter, make me depressed, frustrate me, 
and think on things of the Lord and give my heart to Him, it changes the way I see things. So if you'll pray with me, we will um, end our time. And um, thank you for letting me share what was on my heart. Um, And I just want to pray and just thank God for this time. Dear God, I just thank you for this time that we have to study your word, to concentrate on things of you, to be reminded of how we need to guard our hearts because everything flows from it. Lord, we need to put you at the center. We need to keep you there and remember that you are constant and everything is under your control. I thank you for this time. I thank you for everyone watching. God, I just am so blessed to be able to share my heart and what you've put on my heart with with them. I bless our church and all the staff, all our members. Bless our community, God, and go through it mightily. Help us to bring your kingdom to the community. Let your Holy Spirit just radiate out of this place. In Jesus' name, amen.